All right, we'll call to order this meeting of the Oberlin School District Board of Education. Call the roll. Mr. Stanley? Here. Ms. Gadsden? Here. Ms. Stegel? Here. Ms. Emeka? Here. Ms. Schaum? Here. Take a motion for the adoption of the agenda. So moved. Second. Is there any changes? No. All right, call the roll. Mr. Stanley? Here. Ms. Gadsden? Yes. yes. Ms. Stegel? Yes. Ms. Emeka? <laughs> yes. Ms. Schaum? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, can citizens concerns on agenda items? It's so nice to see a full crowd out there. <laughs> <laughs> none on the internet. None on the website. None, none on the internet. Uh -huh. Any, any? I didn't see any sign in back there. All right. Uh, news of note, Dr. Hall. Okay, tonight we have a great presentation by Langston Middle School and Mrs. Sheila Hicks and her students. We're presenting on when, and I'll turn over to Mrs. Hicks. All right. Good evening. You need to use the mic. Good evening. Thank yeah. You. <laughs> you need it. Hello. I'm told I don't need one. You don't. You do. I will online. take one. Is it on? Hello? It's online. It's, it's online. Here online. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right. Okay. So we have a lot of things going on. Is that the camera? Okay. We have a lot of things going on in our win time at Langston. And WIN stands for What I Need, and we've been using WIN time for advisory, acceleration, enrichment, reinforcement, and intervention. And one of the arguments our students have is, how do you know what we need? That, that might, what you think we need might not be what we think we need, and we understand that's a valid point, and we try to explain to students that our decisions about how our WIN time is used is based on data not feelings and emotions, although we do take that in some consideration because our school counselor takes a survey, has students complete a survey at the beginning of the year, and that survey shares some information about concerns students have, and she tries to adjust, address those concerns in some of her meetings with students. We have a proposal um, from one of our staff members, Tierra Beard, who is our um, literacy coach to change our win period to rise coinciding with our PBIS theme that goes through all of the buildings in the district and it takes away that what I need argument for students um, and turns it into something maybe more intentional where we're using the R to represent relationships and advisory the I to represent interventions social emotional supports and enrichment and extension and at this time we need Javion, Mac, Adrian, Zakira, Janaya, and Larissa. Javion's currently texting someone but he'll be done in a minute. <laughs> okay come over here. So why don't you guys stand right here Start with JVI, and you can pass the mic to the next person who needs the eye change. Just talking to it. Yourself. All right. So just talk as loudly and slowly as you can. All right. Uh, hello, my name is Javion. During when we have advisory groups where we meet with our teachers to discuss our grades, every week during when I check and record my grades in power school. And Ms. Burr, my one teacher, helps me to, to create a plan for success. During when I have a chance to make, to make up for my missing work and improve my grades. My grades have gotten a lot better since, since we started checking our grades with our WIN teachers every week. For example, my math grade went up from a 55% to a 75%. During, during the first half of the school year, I went with Ms. Smith for WIN and we worked on our, on our reading vocabulary and our writing together in a small group. It felt, it felt like a little family, and I feel a little, and I feel nostalgic when I, when I think back on our time together.
Hi, my name is Mackenzie Hicks, and one thing we do during WIN is complete iReady lessons. Because our iReady lessons are designed at our own levels, it helps us grow in our skills. As a building, students are expected to successfully complete one lesson in math and one lesson in reading. Successful completion means we spend at least 35 minutes on each subject in a past lesson with a score of at least 75%. Every time we successfully complete an iReady lesson, our names get put into a raffle to win prizes. I already won the drawing twice and it encouraged me to complete my lessons. I feel like I already has improved math and reading skills. Hi, my name is Adrian Rodriguez. I worked on iReady during WIN and my WIN teachers are there if I need help. I know iReady has helped me be because I got the school record by improving my iReady score by 112 points. My ELA teacher, Miss Agni, made a big deal about my growth and she continues to challenge me in my class and to keep growing. Hi, my name is Zakara East. I'm going to be telling you why WIN is such a, good, uh, such a big help to us. I go to Ms. Sanders' room for support in math, and she does small le group lessons with us in iReady, and that helps us complete our individual iReady lessons successfully. If we have missing work and need to get that done, she'll help us the best she can, she, and she's always honest about completing our work on time so we don't have to worry about it later. Before math test, Ms. Sanders does a pretest with her so we feel more confident, and it helps us perform well on a real test. <laughs> Hi, my name is Janaya, and I found my time in Ms. Smith's WIN class very helpful. Ms. Smith supports students with reading, and she works with us in a small group. I also work with Ms. Sanders with math in a small group. The most helpful part of this intervention time is that it really improves our reading and math skills, and it supports the work we are doing in our ELA and math classes. With the support and help from Ms. Smith and Ms. Sanders, students get better in their reading and math skills, and when they take tests, their grade and growth in reading and math improve. Hi, my name is Larissa, and I also receive extra math support during WIN with Ms. Sanders, and Mr. Marcus is a part of this process too. If Mr. Marcus notices I could use extra help on a topic, he lets Mrs. Sanders know, and she works with me one-on-one -on -one to help me understand the concept more thoroughly. Sometimes it's just helpful to hear things explained in a different way or using a different method because there is more than one way to solve a problem and there are different teaching styles and strategies. Working with Ms. Sanders has helped me very much and, something, and it is something that has benefit, benefited me. <laughs> okay, at this time I'd like to call up Mia and Joanna. Mia and Joanna work with a new program we have um, at Langston um, Structures, and our teachers had special training over the summer with BrainSpring to learn how to provide this intervention to students.
Do you know the longest reported word in the English dictionary? Well, English language. I actually do. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? It's Numano Ultra Microscopic Silicone Volcano Coniosis. <laughs> 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 This is the long word. There are three methods used to read a complex word, even words with 45 letters in it. We sound it out using the letter sound. We use what we call s- syllabication. It, this is when we break long words into syllables. We look at the larger chunks of the word to find their meaning. We, we use all three of these methods in our WIN class. We think it is a lot of fun, and we continue to learn a lot. Okay, you can move there. We know there is one of these methods that is helping us read larger, more complex words in our middle school classes. We are going to quickly look at all three methods. A strong letter sound uh, knowledge A strong letter sound knowledge helps us to become fluent readers. When we are fluent readers, it leads us to understand understanding everything we read. Syllabication is a lot of fun. Let us show you how we do it. Um, Wait, can you go back, please? Okay. Go go up there and show. Oh, yeah. Basically, we mark all of the vowels and then we connect them and then we put the whatever. we put the C to show the consonant and then we find where we um, break them up and then we put where the they close, open, or close. The vowels are open. You need the mic for the television. Thank you. Okay. Morphology is the study of the word parts and their meanings. This is the most productive way to read more complex word words that we are seeing in our classes. Microscopic silicone volcano sonic osis. Yeah. Um, this word is a lung disease caused by inhaling dust particles like silicone and volcanic ash that are extra small and can be seen only with a microscope. Close to 70% of our higher level vocabulary used in high school, college textbooks, and other highly trained jobs come from Greek and Latin morphemes. Just 100 morphemes can triple triple the size of our comprehension vocabulary. We are well on our way and having a lot of fun doing it. Very much. At right, this time, J- Jayana Katura Kachina. And we'll go back to the other slides. Okay, wait, let me get to the slides. Uh, I'm Jayana Jones. During Honors ELA Win, we participated in the Mott's Museum to support anti-bias education. 
Before the competition, students have to write a personal essay about bias they have witnessed or experienced in 500 words or less. A lot of people in our society are treated with different types of discrimination. For example, a lot of people experience racism, gender discrimination, homophobia, colorism, and maybe even ageism. I have experienced different types of discrimination, but I wrote about how my best friend was treated badly by people at school because they didn't like her. Nobody really even knows her, but they treat her like an outsider. There's always going to be people who discriminate against others, but making people aware of bias through competitions like Stop the Hate can help. Hi, my name is Katura. During our Stop the Hate unit, we accomplished a couple of steps to complete the essay. The first step we took to write our essay was looking at hateful pictures and sharing our thoughts about them. The second step was to complete a Stop the Hate virtual tour to reflect our intolerance and oppression in the past and present. Then we completed a six-week essay writing workshop on Zoom with Cynthia Larson from Lake Erie, Inc. My essay was about an interaction I had where someone was making a joke saying I was stupid. The Stop the Hate unit helped me think about events that made me feel how I changed from it. During this whole unit, we talked about both past and present hateful times that have affected our world today. My name is Katina Smith. All our stories were submitted into the Stop the Hate competition. We are still waiting for, a win for the winning story to be announced. There is judging rubric, and the top scoring student will receive individual rewards, and their school can receive anti-bias education grants. All all participants will receive an upstanders certificate. My Stop the Hate essay was about my experience of me and my two friends being called a racial slur. We will wrap up our Stop the Hate unit by taking a field trip to the Mott Museum of Jewish Heritage, a museum of diversity and tolerance. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Scarlett, Jaden, and Jason, Molly, William, is Natalie here? Okay. So as they were practicing, I told them, you're going to have to talk louder and slower than you normally do. Was I right? Yes? Uh -huh. okay. Yeah. All right, Scarlett. <laughs> okay. um, hi, my name is Scarlett Baker. And during Honors ELA Wins, sixth grade students participate in Young Authors. Young Authors is a program for kindergarten through eighth grade students in Lorain County. You have the opportunity to write a book and have it published and put in a competition where two students will be chosen to win a trophy, one for art and the other for their story. The title of my story is called Imaginary Friend, and it's a fictional story. This is an excerpt from my book. I open my eyes and I'm standing in the middle of a room. This room has pink walls, many stuffies, and a girl playing with a dollhouse in the corner. She turns around and waves me over, and so I go over. She asks me, who do you want to play as? My name is Jaden Green. I wrote a fictional chapter book that I titled First Night Fright. And I'm going to read you an excerpt from, from my first chapter. Once upon a time, four friends, Keegan, Braxton, Ares, and me, Jaden, we were on our way to the first day of school in Indiana. On our way, we saw something weird on a random boulevard. It was a bank robbery. We couldn't do anything because we had school, but Ares did not want to go to school, and nor did Keegan. So Ares and Keegan went to duel with the robbers. Braxton and, I decided to Braxton and I decided to stay safe and sat on the concrete. However, Ares and Keegan did not know that the robbers had weapons, which is kind of idiotic. Keegan and Ares then had to, runny, then had to run to school. My name is Jason Holly, and I wrote a short story called The Strange Middle School. My story is a, middle, is a mystery, and here is one of my favorite parts. My middle school is weird to say the least, and I don't know where to start because everything is weird. The teachers are, do not care what you do or what happens to you, and the food is even weirder. One day it's good and hot, but the next day it's cold and bad. The weirdest thing is you have a choice of whether you want to go to school or not. Most people think it's a trap, which is not true. I've done it many times. But before I get carried away, I have to introduce myself. Hi, my name is Molly Caldwell Kepner. The title of my book is The Crown of Sticks and Stones. And um, it's a fictional book meant for adolescent readers. I'm going to read you my favorite excerpt. As soon as the words came out of my mouth, I felt shock run through my body like lightning. 
White stared down at the floor. I felt surprise and overwhelmingly nervousness flood my body. At, flood my body and came at me like the walls were caving in. That the queen spoke again, but I couldn't hear. The room started to spin and everything went black. Hello, my name is William McFarland. I will tell you all a short synopsis of my book, Journey to a Place That Never Happened. Two children, she and he, and Philip, their weaver bird, go out on a journey to a place that never happened. Or, as we would put in real life, they go on a journey of life's adventures. They will overcome many hurdles and achieve many feats. Though since happy little endings don't always happen, my story has so me something many others do not. If you want to find out, you may just have to see for yourself. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Nice work. At this time, we'll call up Liam, Maya, Mavis, Brandon, and EJ. As part of our honors ELA win, we made connections with our seventh grade ELA novel by completing a research project and reading a companion novel. Our class novel, Holes, the research project, and our companion novels all related to the themes of justice and greed. I did my research project on the 19th Amendment. This law ties to the themes of justice because it gives women the right to vote, which is a very large step towards justice and equality. The companion novel I chose was Just Mercy, which is about a young law school student who works with prisoners on death row to get them out of their punishment. This theme connects to the theme of justice and greed because it shows how people should be treated equally and how greed and corruption can cause people to act with bias and injustice. My research project is on the Seneca Falls Convention. The Seneca Falls Convention is recognized as the start of the women's suffrage movement, which was the fight for women to vote. I also read two companion novels, Just Mercy and An Uninterrupted View of the Sky. In An Uninterrupted View of the Sky, Francisco and his sister, Pilar, are put in prison with their father when their father was accused of dealing with drugs. In that part of Bolivia, it was not an unusual thing for the whole family to move to a prison if a parent was arrested. The story is about Francisco's struggle to support his family and try to get them all out of prison. The story is also about how the 1008 law, which was put into place by the US, affected innocent people and families. This ties to the theme of justice and greed in our ELA book, Holes, because Francisco is learning about how innocent people are being oppressed by the laws in place in his country. Like Maya, I also chose An Uninterrupted View of the Sky as my companion novel. Our companion novels were mostly read independently outside of class. And during independent reading, we kept a log and wrote a summary for every 25 pages. We also had to find 10 unfamiliar words and find their meaning. My favorite aspect of the book is the emotional atmosphere the author created with their choice of words. I would definitely recommend this book to others. I'm a seventh grader in seventh grade science. I'm, an, I'm also taking eighth grade science during my one time, two days a week. Mr. Byer is teaching my class the eighth grade curriculum so I can take the biology class next year in eighth grade. At the end of the eighth grade course, I will be taking the eighth grade set of Ohio tests. The eighth grade science class is broken down into three main units, physical science, earth science, and life science. During the physical science unit, we did some labs outside while studying Newton's laws of motion. During the earth science unit, we studied plate motion and did a lab on tectonics. The last unit is life science, and we will be studying genetics. Taking the eighth grade science class will help prepare me for biology and other science classes in my future. I am also a seventh grader taking eighth grade science win two days a week, along with Brandon and 26 other seventh grade students. Earlier today, the whole class went on a field trip to Shagbark Haven, 
a house on West College near P Prospect. We were warmly greeted by David, Eva, and Graciela. Eva and Graciela are students at Oberlin College who helped to make the maple syrup. They took us on a, walk, a walking tour behind the house at, where there were several maple trees and a large evaporator to boil down the sap. First, we went to a little gazebo where they demonstrated how to tap a tree. Then we were lucky enough to sample the raw maple sap, which was surprisingly delicious. We proceeded to the sugar shack, where the raw sap is boiled at extreme temperatures to turn into syrup. We gathered in front of another building, and David generously promised to send us little bottles of maple syrup when it was done. Overall, the trip to Shagbark Haven was very educational and fun. Everyone was really nice, and we learned a lot about how maple syrup is made. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to call up Grace Riley, Natavia, Cece, and Preston. Okay, my name is Riley Kaminsky and I am in Ms. Agnes Honors ELA win class. Currently, we are working on mock trial. In mock trial, we simulate a real court case in the classroom. We aim to connect our in-class learning with real world experiences and situations. Through mock trial, we are using skills necessary for state testing, such as making claims, finding evidence to support them, and addressing counterclaims that could hurt our argument. The case we chose to recreate for mock trial is State versus Martin. In this legal case, Beck Martin is charged with murder after a high school rock climber who threatens to turn him in for cheating on a crucial exam was found dead at the base of a cliff. For this trial, Ms. Agnes Wynn will serve as the prosecution and Mr. Ruiz's Wynn will be portraying the defense. My name is Grace Petzak and I'm also in Ms. Agnes Wynn. Some people in both honors Wynn groups have had experience with mock trial in the past. Both Riley and I did it in fifth grade. In our win, Riley has taken charge of the class. She has led us through the process of preparing for the trial and organized us into functional groups. We've worked on the signing roles and writing witness questions. Riley and I have worked together a lot on this project since she is the attorney assigned to question my witness. This project has brought us together as a team and our win has become an environment where we can relax and have fun while still getting work done. On the whole, I think mock trial has been our best experience and win so far this year. Hi, I'm Natavia, and I'm one of many that participated in the National History Day contest. In honors ELA win, we participated in the National History Day co competition by researching the topic based on the NHD theme, debate and diplomacy in history, successes, failures, consequences. consequences. After researching our topic, we followed several steps in writing our essay paper, and the whole process lasted from September to March. My topic was about Malcolm X and the Black Panther movement. I learned Malcolm X was not just the famous speaker everyone thinks he is, but he was also an influencer and activist that supported marches and food drives that helped communities. This was a long and challenging process, but I knew I had supporting teachers like Ms. Agni and Mr. Ruiz to help along the way. Hi, my name is Cece. I am one of the of the many that participated in the National History Day contest. So the first part of the process was gather, gathering 100 facts through research. After gathering our facts, we created an outline for our essay, followed by a bibliography. While writing our essays, we received lots of feedback from our English teacher, Ms. Agni, and our reading support teacher, Ms. Smith. I wrote my paper about the Treaty of Versailles and the appeasement. I interviewed a World War II vet and used that information in my research paper. After research papers were completed, they were submitted into the Ohio History Day contest for grades 6 to 12, which is divided into three tiers, regional, state, and national. Students must qualify for competition by advancing from the regional level to the state level. My paper made it past the regional level and was advanced to state competition. 
Yeah. Hi, my name is Preston, and I'm talking about when when we go into the library. Once a week, we have our win time in the library. First, Ms. Rice checks to see if we need help with our already or other assignments. Then we have free choice time to either go on the computer, read books, check out books, play with the hex bugs, play chess, or other game. I like that we get to have free choice time, and Ms. Rice ha makes the library very inviting. Ms. Rice also introduced our five book choices for one school, one book a school-wide reading activity where our whole building will read the same book together. The five book choices are Refugee, I Am Malala, The Boy Who Harnessed A Long Walk to Water, and The Island of the Blue Dolphins. All five books connect with the theme of resilience, and we all voted on our favorite book title yesterday in school. I voted for The Island of the Blue Dolphins. Let's have Ruby, Brianna, and Joseph. Hello, I am Ruby Schaefer, the eighth grade student council president at Langston Middle School. And today we are here to share with you what we are doing to help Ukrainian refugees. So as an IB school, we try to be globally minded and think about the needs of others and not just our own. As LMS's student council, we have put our effort and resources into learning about and supporting the crisis in Ukraine. On February 24, 2022, Russia began its invasion of Ukraine. Caused by an escalation of the Russo-Ukrainian War, which began in 2014, the Russian army has launched devastating attacks, bombarding Ukrainian cities, closing in on its capital, Kiev, and prompting a mass exodus of refugees. Approximately 2.6 million Ukrainians have been displaced, and the number of deaths and fatal injuries are appalling. Following our student council, LMS has been raising money to help in any way we can. Hi, I'm Brianna. I'm the PR person for student council. I help collect donations during the lunch periods. The money raised will go to two different organizations. The first organization is helping at the border, and then is assisting in relocating families. The second or organization is to send aid to Ukrainians waiting of, at the border of Poland, Ukraine, who are unable to get into Poland at this time. The organizations both work, I'm sorry, both organizations work on both sides of the border collecting supplies and then bringing them across the border <laughs> to the refugees waiting to enter Poland. Because it is so cold, they have constructing, constructed warming tents and regularly provide hot food and drinks. They also have now set up medical tents to help treat people who arrive with hypothermia as well as other health problems. They also just sent an ambulance full of medical supplies to the site of the bombing from over the weekend, which could be he heard from their side of the border. <coughs> Thank you. Okay, my name is Joseph Jones. As of today, we have raised a little over $1,100. Since we hit $1,000, our eighth grade social studies teacher will jump into Lake Erie. No matter, <laughs> no matter the water or air temperature, we had one fifteen hundred dollars. Our seventh grade math teacher will jump into Lake Erie, and when we hit two thousand dollars, our seventh grade social study teacher will jump into Lake Erie. If you will like to help us to reach our goal and send our teachers into Lake Erie, please consider donation <laughs> donating to cause to the causes. <laughs> <laughs> we also have pamphlets with a little bit more information. Yep. If you would like one, raise your hand and give one to every board member and then give some to the audience members. Thank you. Um, so, win time, you can see this is all except Thank for you. the student council activity, which we stuck in under one. Um, these are all things that are happening only during one period each day in school. And there are other things that happen during WIN too. We have our nine scholars who, um, from the nine program, they will meet with 
students who they are supporting through their education. That happens during win time. We have our uh, math counts tutors meeting with individual students during win time to support them in math. We have our guidance counselor who meets with small groups of students, again, based on um, the needs that she has discovered either through their survey or by talking to students or other issues that arise in the building. And so our win time is very busy. Um, it's been a valuable time for our students, and there's much more than this happening at Langston, so you know, you're welcome to stop on by. Thank you, Sly. So thank you. Thank you to you, Dr. Hall and the school board for inviting us. Thank you to our teachers who are doing an amazing job with students all throughout the day, including win time. Thank you to our students. You guys did a fabulous job planning and writing and practicing. Good job to you. And thank you to the parents for getting them here this evening. So thank you to everyone. Are we renaming Win Rise? Or is it that's what we're that's year? what we're discussing as a building. Okay, okay. It's been proposed. I got it. It's probably something as a district you want to move on to is move on to as well because I'm aware that um, high school has Win period as well, and also elementary may have some intervention period too. So that's a great strategy. I'd um, like to thank our students for a phenomenal job and our parents for helping them out. So I'll give her another round of applause. For your job. And when would never have been successful without our administrators, um, teachers, counselors, everyone working together, parents providing support, and also our, our phenomenal students as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you very, very, very much for supporting our students in the district as well. Appreciate it. Okay. Board, do you have any questions for? Yes. Yes. So to the students who are doing the Ukraine project, um, will there be video uh, footage of the teachers. <laughs> yes. So for those of us who are listening, we need to donate. Uh, not only is it a good cause, but we will also get some entertainment <laughs> out of this. So um, hopefully we can uh, help you all reach that $2,000 and get a nice little video uh, up on the school uh, website. That would be great. <laughs> So, so just to clarify, how is it that people should donate this? Are we sending it to the board office, to LMS? The easiest way would be to send it to LMS because it's going through student council. So if you want to write a check, you can still make it out to Overland City Schools. If you want to donate cash, you can just send that to the main office at Langston. We'll get it in the hands of our student council advisor, and he'll take it from there. Okay. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> yes. How, how long are you staying in Lake? That's the question. <laughs> we didn't put that stipulation on there. Maybe that's oh. something. Maybe we can have a three thousand dollar mark. <laughs> <laughs> you, they got to jump all the way in. Yes. Yes. So the yes. water has to come at least up to their shoulders. Over their head. <laughs> okay. Well, Over their head. <laughs> Submerged. <laughs> <laughs> We, we can pass the plate around right now. If you... <laughs> um, thank you again. Our students were promised pizza, and it is in the library. And so at this time, I'm, unless anyone has any more questions, I'm going to excuse them to the library. Please wait till Mr. Byer is there to distribute. And if anyone else wants a pamphlet, there are more available. Let's just sit them on the table. There you go. Thank you. Thank you, students. Thank you. I'll be right back. That ain't gonna get it. That ain't gonna get it right now. <laughs> Additional superintendent reports. I'd like to um, inform the board, our community, our final 
performance of the Rope Rappers is tomorrow at 6.30, between 6.30 and 7.30, tomorrow at Oberlin Elementary School, so please come out and join and support the Rope Rappers. <laughs> also, the district will engage in um, a recruiting fair over the next um, three to four, over the next couple of months here. We will be attending Central State University, HBCU, for recruiting teachers. We also will be going to Finley, Bowling Green, and Youngstown State University and some other schools will be there as well. We know we may have to anticipate some openings for next year and we hope to have active recruiting um, to recruit some teachers back to the district. Our also interview teachers, hopefully homegrown in the area. Okay. Next we have our facilities update and Mr. Eibel, Chief Operations, would like to provide that. Abbreviated tonight. Um, we don't have Rich and Dan here tonight, but still, I'll give you a little bit of an update. That is unbelievably hard to follow, yeah, yeah. right? And Miss Emeka, good for you. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so good. It's so good to see them, though, and, and see what they're doing. Uh, again, abbreviated tonight. Uh, Safety Town Fence is up, if you didn't see the pad on the project with the city. So that's up, uh, ready to go to start putting some things in. Uh, Safety Town is scheduled to be here at the elementary June 20th. So I think Officer Needham is available June 20th. So hopefully there will be some buildings in there and, and some kids will get to ride tricycles around some buildings. Um, spring break coming up, we've got lots of punch list items. Uh, construction crews still coming in, working on things in the building. The, the punch list items uh, are getting very, very small, but they're doing some things like, uh, you know, we're still getting PD. We've got some risers that will go up in here. So we're going to learn how to put up the risers, the temporary risers. Um, they're going to install some furniture that's still coming in. So we're still getting some furniture things moved in and out, of course, with the new furniture. Uh, parking lot painting, the numbers should be getting on, the rest of all those things. So, uh, and, and the last thing I wanted to end with was, uh, I think we sent you an update about, we sent out a voice blast about bus movers and more, our online auction for Eastwood items. So if anybody's looking for some uh, historical items, of prospect, no historical significance to us, but old worn out furniture that you think you might like to have. Uh, you know, part of moving into the new building is new furniture, and we have uh, taken everything out of there to put in Langston and the high school, because we can't bring it into the new building. But uh, the things that are, that are still there that uh, we're looking to move on. Go on and bid, busmoversandmore.com. The link is on the website, right? And everything's priced really, really low. So go buy a chair or 10 chairs or whatever you're looking to <laughs> put on your deck. So really small chairs. <laughs> yes, and, and there are still, there are prospect items on there too. The city is in possession, of course the city owns prospect now, but they are doing the same thing with the, with the items. So prospect items are on there too. And it starts on page six still? Aspect. Yeah, it's moving up. Okay. It's, all of our stuff I think has eight days and some hours left. So if, if it's Oberlin stuff, it has eight days left. You have five days to pay for it after that, and then you can come pick it up. So you pay online, and we just have to open the door and set up time for you to come get it. And please come get it. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Okay. Any questions regarding our facilities update? Do you know how far along we are with the punch list? Like so are we, we are, I would say, over 90%. We are really close. Okay. So. Yeah. And Rich is still in the building here, so. We can still grab him when we need him. It's nice. <laughs> and Dan's still finding things. Yeah, so for sure. We don't want him to leave yet until Dan's done with his punch list. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Uh -huh. Thanks. Conclude your report. Conclude my report. All right, moving on to action items. I need a motion for board, board item A, approval of the February 22nd and March 8th minutes. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All right, call the roll. Mr. Stanley? Yes. Ms. Gadsden? Yes. Ms. Deagle? Yes. Ms. Mecca? Yes. Ms. Shaw? Yes. I'll entertain a motion for treasurer's items A and B. So moved. Second. Whenever you're ready. All right, we ended February with $16,028,137. Outstanding checks were $31,826.12. Um, if we look at our 
spend my month, which correlates to our five-year forecast. We are 67% um, through the year. Our total expenses are at 65%, and we've collected close to 70% of the revenue that I've projected for the district. Um, we did get our final payment this year in March for, bar or for the first half of real estate taxes, um, and that came in right where we have projected it. So we're moving right along with where we should be, um, especially with the general fund. As for all funds, the building project is winding up. Um, we still do have a cash balance in there of $3,802,000. We still have over $800,000 outstanding in encumbrances. Um, we did get reimbursed from the city on their portion of the fence for Safety Town. So all our reimbursements have been paid, um, grants and everything, except for the dashboard. And we're still working with that to get the dashboard up. And then we'll get that money from the College Green Fund. Um, Athletics, and I know with Ms. Shum, you like the um, lunchroom. And it, when we look at like is the right <laughs> if we look at the fun. yeah, if we look at the lunchroom compared to last year, we're at um, just a little over forty-two thousand dollars short. But this month's February's payment hadn't came in yet. And if we compare that to other years at this time, over the last four years, we're usually right around ninety thousand. So. We are making a big stride in getting that to be profitable, especially with the, all the students able to eat for free. So any questions on the financials? Um, we did get three donations for the month. We got $1,746 in clothing and baskets um, donated to the school from Tammy Koleski. And we got $1,400 and $10 of books and baskets donated by Tammy also. And we also had disinfectant wipes and sprays um, donated for use to wipe down the buses and all the seats by Laylee Kotnick. And we thank you for donating that stuff. That's all I have. Any questions, Bob? No. All right, call the roll. Mr. Stanley? Yes. Ms. Gatson? Yes. Ms. Stegall? Yes. Ms. Emeka? Yes. Ms. Shang? Yes. All right, I'll take a motion for superintendent consent items A through C6. So moved. Seconded. Item A is approved with a 2223 Lorraine County Board of DD Agreements, annual occurrence. B is a 2223 Meta Solutions Master Service Agreement. Item C is personnel report. We have uh, item one is reduction in force and athletic director of operations um, coordinating position. That's currently held by John Carter. That'll be um, revamped into the athletic director um, slash um, transportation coordinating position. Um, and also the days will um, go down into no summer activities for that position as well. Uh, what we have found out was in the summer is kind of a low period for athletics. So from 260, it'll go to 230, 230 days with um, additional days for extra duties during that, that time period. That matches what other districts have in that yes. similar position. Yes. And he also will be taking on the duties, which you're currently doing now is transportation as well, be assisting with that. Okay. Item two is resignations. Um, I'd like to thank our staff who are retiring. Uh, Robin Deidres, phenomenal teacher, great union president, done a great job throughout the last um, couple of years with the district as union president and phenomenal. We have a lot done under new, new contracts with her and um, it's been great working with her and watching her teach, wish her the best. Also Sandy Sweet as well and Monica Smith as well. Okay. We'll um, issue Robin a plaque at the end of the school year. Item three is additional changes position. We have Tara Burnett. Michelle Kessler, uh, Mark Reynolds, and also Jay Ninami's position as well, Student Family Support Coordinator. Um, how the Student Family Support Coordinator position came about was uh, actually, it was from the community, say that we had a need for all our agencies, building them together in a liaison form. Previously in the past, we've never had a person 
are the position that was able to um, to deal with crisis or deal with emergencies, work with Lakata, Applewood, Beachbrook, Mental Health Board, Salvation Army, um, the community during community chat and also in our strategic planning identified that was an area of weakness for us. Um, for example, like Jeremiah's sudden passing away, um, Mr. Nenemy was able to take care of a lot of those things with the family, arrange um, uh, a grieving period for um, students to attend during that period um, at Overlook High School, um, and also working with difficult students um, at our academy as well. Some of the position duties include um, working with the Mental Health Board, the Health and Dentistry, Overland Community Services, County Business Advisory Council, Mercy, Nord, County Crisis Team, Lorraine County, um, our nurses, um, Second Harvest. So someone is actually able to work with our counselors and also with our social worker as well and combine those resources together. Um, some of the things that have been done out of that position um, Mr. Nenemy has also um, elevated up a little bit by joining the City of Overland Equity and Diversity Committee, working on organizing the Overland Memorial Day celebration with our veterans, collaborated with OCS on food distribution projects. He's a member of the NAACP, created a virtual learning center during the pandemic, which was critical for some of our students and parents to have a location to go to. Um, collaborated with the Boys and Girls Club on events. Um, and also during our summer program last year, coordinating uh, field trips for our students and a social emotional piece for our students as well. Um, and it's a team effort. He works with the counselors and also social workers to make these activities happen for the district as well. A lot of things are done behind the scenes. Um, people don't see it, but he's also working with a lot of our students from going to home visits to visiting, um, um, working on our attendance, students with attendance um, challenges. He also worked with that too as well. The district has to have a, a, a home, um, a homeless liaison. He's also our ex our homeless liaison representative as well. Item four is the leave of absence for Melissa Daniels, um, Karen Farlow, employment, personnel positions. Uh, we have some substitutes we'd like to welcome aboard as well. Um, new substitutes for teachers and also substitute custodians. Um, We've been very successful trying to get some more in, and hopefully we'll continue with the process. Item six, the supplementals, um, home instruction, track, and another home instruction person who will provide support from our students. Um, and tennis as well. Request permission and approval of items A through C6 from the board. Questions and discussion? Um, what, one comment that I want to make uh, about Jay's position in, in this district, you know, this has been one of the most challenging times to, you know, be a citizen, I guess, <laughs> I'll say, of the world, uh, but, you know, working in the schools. And, you know, there's always been a lot of focus on our children's health, the mental health, their physical health, the you know, we're here to, to help bring in the next generation of um, successful adults into our community. And this, as, as Dr. Hall pointed out, this is one of the pillars of our strategic plan and a critical approach that we wanted to be taking in, in being intentional about how we address um, issues outside of education. And I mean, we all know education is no longer about teaching ABC one, two, three. You have to deal with the kids, Alpha Omega, whatever they're dealing with, all kinds of supports outside of the classroom. But of course, with the pandemic, you also have to think about our employees, not just the teachers, all of the OPSI employees, the administrators. Mental health has become something that is becoming more acceptable to talk about, but you know, having services that we can put in place to actually give our people what we need. Some of the things aren't gonna work. Some of the things are going to help the right person at the right time and we don't really know what that's gonna be. But I personally wanna say thank you to Jay, thank you to Dr. Hall for having the vision to put this kind of resource in place. It's not gonna be perfect. 
we're going to find things that work and things that aren't going to work, but we keep trying it and we keep working on it. And it's great to have a resource um, in, the, in the district that is dedicated to making this work. So. Mr. Nina, maybe we'll also have some coffee chats too as well as this is where the ideas come from the community to help out as well. If you have various ideas on um, resources, um, I know after one meeting, Rose and I were talking about providing support for additional support for students that um, just came out of a chat. Um, so he'll establish some coffee chats as well with community members to come in and give some ideas and some, um, you know, maybe some suggestions for the position and how he can expand it even more to reach, reach our needs. Because he's also there in the community as well. And um, it's not just our students, but also our parents and teachers and community. Any further discussion? Call the roll. Mr. Stanley? Yes. Ms. Gadsden? Yes. Ms. Stegel? Yes. Ms. Emeka? Yes. Ms. Sham? Yes. Motion carried. All right, comments, discussion, board update. I can, I'll just preemptively say JVS doesn't meet until Thursday, so I do not have a JVS update. And I don't believe we had anything that changed legislatively since I guess we did have. No. We, we had some legislative. They did change the um, June um, House Bill, was it House Bill? Senate Bill 11 um, was written. There was misprints when they wrote the law of June um, Juneteenth holiday. They made it so only nine, nine and 10 month employees would be guaranteed it and it was supposed to be 11 and 12 month employees. So they did reverse that. The governor has signed it and it goes into law on May 11th. Um, and everything else is really, everything that's been out there, there hasn't been anything really okay. moving. Other updates? Um, the endowment committee didn't meet since the last meeting, so. Um, yeah, we but are they tomorrow. are going into the grants, so tomorrow yes. they're going to start meeting. But the last, uh, the final due date for any applications is going to be April eighth, Friday, April eighth. Yes. Yep. Y'all need to get out. That gives everybody <laughs> spring break to work on it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this isn't an update, but the town and gown committee is going to meet on Monday, March twenty first at three p.m. So I should have an update at our next meeting. No updates from the technology or uh, personal finance. Finance has a strategic planning meeting next week, right? Is yes. Next yes. Week? Okay. Yes. We also announced that, you know, time had passed. Um, Mr. Russell's in. A, I feel terrible if I didn't announce it. Huh? Mr. Russell's in a building as well, and like to thank him. <laughs> he was a final four for our national for national teacher of the year as well, so he was. <laughs> which took place at Washington, D.C.? Yes. Correct, so you took a trip there, mm -hmm. and um, I've known you for a while. You did a, I know you did a phenomenal job. Wow. So in April, we'll hear oh. back from the committee whether um, he became the National Teacher of the Year. You're the national teacher of our hearts. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other updates? Not hearing of the public on other items. Did anybody sign up, Jim? Jim McConaughey. Great. Good to see you. Good well, see you. half of you anyway. I'd like yeah. to see the rest of you, but that's, a, that's your choice, and I appreciate that. One thing I would like to do is put a challenge out to Dr. Hall and the rest of you. You all sit there with microphones. This is my third meeting this year, and the third time we've had the issues hearing out there. Why don't we work on technology and make this broadcast to where everyone can hear it, and you record that. Verse this is foolish for us to stand here and make a YouTube video for other people to hear when the people in the crowd can't hear. That's just appalling to me, to be honest. Um, Mr. Russell, amazing job. 
sad to hear that now you are the best teacher we've got and you're going out of teaching for a year. <laughs> um, that, that breaks my heart. Um, but as you talked about recruiting, I think you need to work at recruiting the students that have left our school system yes. for the reasons. Yes. Um, getting great teachers in here is of little value if we don't keep the people in our community in the schools. So that's there is one other thing. The other thing I would like to ask in Dr. Hall and, and, and Ann, you know that I had many communications with you over the mass of the last two weeks. I would challenge you to write a policy me as a conscientious parent should be able to know without your opinion or your opinion or anyone else's opinion when it's amassing. I hope we never go back to it, but I was trying to decide is this a power struggle, a fear thing? What, is real, what, what are we using? We talked about we're gonna follow the Rain County Board of Health, we're gonna follow the CDC. Well, they were on board long before we were. Um, we need to be up there with it. We need a policy that's written. That way we know where it is and where we stand. And if people don't agree, then we can address that. I think everyone should have their choice. I think it's wonderful that some of you are doing it. You're wearing a can with a beard. It blows my mind. Um, <laughs> but that's beside the Fair point. I, I, I totally respect your opinion for doing it. But it needs to be a policy that I think the, the populace can see. So thank you. Thank you, Jeff. And Mr. I Russell will have an office in Oberlin next year, so he won't be far, so we already arranged to get him an office here. See, we've already decided you won, <laughs> just for the record. <laughs> and I'd like to add that Mr. Russell is not, not leaving teaching. He will be teaching, but at another level. Yeah. Uh, we just, oh, yeah. We're sharing him with, with, Hopefully with a nation. wider world. <laughs> so we thank you for that, yeah. Mr. Russell. We're very proud. Yes. Anything else? Anybody else sign up? 702 <laughs> future meetings uh, so thanks to the spring break we're early this week so that means we get a nice long break our next meeting is April 26th followed by May 24th so back to monthly meetings right here uh, hopefully we'll figure out sound sound options so that everybody can hear even when the soft-spoken kids are whispering into the microphone <laughs> um, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn Second. Call the roll. Mr. Stanley. Yes. Ms. Gadsden. Yes. Ms. Stegall. Yes. Ms. Emeka.